Welcome to the Stellar Gaming Dev YouTube channel. Today I am going to show you an easy way to scroll on your game screen. This tutorial is based off of an older one that was probably a little hard to follow. I hope this one is easier for you to understand and generate your ideas from. It's quite easy overall and I'm only using two extensions. Remember, if you find my practical G developed tutorials useful for your game ideas, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So we are going to go ahead and start with the two main extensions used for this project. The first is the button states extension, which turns objects into clickable buttons, and the second is the sticker extension, which sticks objects to each other. We can head on over to the main window to observe my setup and all the objects I'm using currently for this scene. Now, as you can see, I have quite a few objects in this scene already, including several rectangular blocks and a basic background image. And each object serves a specific purpose and has a specific behavior that makes them function as needed for this project. In the object selection box over towards the right, there is a red square named blocker, and it has been set to certain positions on the scene. Two of the blockers are outside of the scene window, while two are partly inside the scene window, close to the blue block. If I click on one of them to look at its properties and its points, you can see that both its center and origin point are in the same spot. If I move over to the behaviors, there is a behavior called platform. The box to use the ledges for the platform has been unchecked. The properties are the same for each of the red blocks. The next block is a blue rectangle that I have named slider. Once again, the center and origin points are in the same spot. However, it has a few extra behaviors compared to the red blocks. The first notable difference I'd like to point out is the sticker behavior, which I mentioned earlier. Here, I have a tween behavior added to the object for smooth movement, and I'll show what it's for a little later. The next behavior has an interesting use case. It's a platformer object not being used like a traditional platform character. Instead, the default control box is unchecked and all of the values are set to zero. So in this instance, the platformer character object is simply just a block that really does nothing, but it still maintains the behavior, which prevents it from being able to pass through regular platform objects. So anytime the blue object collides with the red object, it will be stopped. The next added property to this object is the draggable behavior, which allows you to move objects anywhere on the screen. The box to do a precise collision check is left as is, and this is all that you need to do. The next two objects are the green and red small squares you see on screen next to the blue rectangle. They both also have the same origin and center point. The behavior they use is the button state extension. This particular extension treats objects as buttons, allowing them to be pressed, while having a variety of state properties applied to them, like tinging the object when you hover the cursor over it. This extension and its behavior reminds me of the time I used Gato and discovered the texture button, which allows you to do the same thing, since I was attempting to make the same game in both engines. GDevelop gets it done a bit faster in my personal opinion, the last object is just a regular image I'll be using for the scrolling example. The points of the image are all the same and it has the sticker behavior added to it. I can now go to my event sheet and show you how simple the setup is. As usual, there's not much you need to do to get things working for this. In the first block I have actions that control what I need to show for the tutorial but I do have an action that hides specific objects in a group called blockers. If you have multiple objects that you want to be hidden at the same time, you can put them in a single group like this and go to your event sheet and use the action to hide an object. You can also use it to hide groups of objects you make here, which in this case would be all the red blocks. 
At the very top is an action that can deactivate behaviors for objects. In this situation, I am actively controlling if the draggable behavior should work or not. This is because I want to show the scrolling feature being used with the draggable behavior and without it, using a tween. The last action makes the opacity of the slider object slightly transparent and is set to 100. Now I can preview the game and see how all the red rectangles are gone and the visibility of the slider object has changed. In this code block, I have a trigger once while true as a condition, and as an action, I have a stick an object to another. Here, I stick the image to the slider object. The next code block determines what happens when the green or red button is pressed. For the actions, I've added a permanent force to move to a specific angle when the green button is pressed. In the action's properties, I have the angle set to 270, which moves the object upward, and the speed is set to 90, which moves the object at a steady pace. The type of force used is permanent, and it will keep moving up until I use an action to stop it. Selecting a permanent force requires a trigger once while true condition to manage correctly. The next block controls the red button and when it is pressed, the force moving the slider object will be stopped. This type of scrolling gives you control in a different way. I'm going to head back to the main scene window and move the image onto the slider object since the sticker behavior has been applied to it. Now, I can go to the game preview and see how each actions work. First, I'll move the slider object to check if the image will move up and down with it. And if the red blockers outside the scene window will stop the blue slider from going further in either direction, then I will move it left and right to make sure the red blockers prevent the slider object from being dragged in those directions. Everything appears to be working as intended. Now I can test and see if the green and red buttons work properly when they are pressed. Pressing the green button will make the slider scroll up automatically but pressing the red button will make it stop. And since I have the drag behavior on, I can move it back down at any time, and it will still move up. The platformer object behavior is still activated, so it will stop moving if it collides with the red rectangle. Even so, it's still a good idea to use the proper action to stop all forces completely. You can also use an action to tween the object by its X or Y position. Here I am using the action to shift the object's Y position to 270, which is upward. With the platform object behavior still active, the object will be stopped when it collides with the red blocker. Though the best method for button press scrolling are forces, in my personal opinion, you can use it vertically or horizontally, since the red blocker can be moved in any way you choose, and since they were made in Piskel, they don't demand any significant resources. You can use this on any screen size, so this is good practice for beginners. Thanks for watching this tutorial on doing a simple scrolling action in GDevelop. Stay tuned for more soon.